Well, more, we can speak to our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Hello to you, Doug. Hi there. Uh, in that report, we saw a clip of Hassan Nasrallah's speech, very provocative, but Hezbollah is in a bit of dilemma, aren't they? Yeah, well, first of all, the speech first. It is clear that Nasrallah, um, and this is his signature sort of speech form, he was defiant, and he was very clear that no, Hezbollah has no intention of ceasing its rocket attacks uh, into Israel. Remember, there have been near daily, daily cross-border fires, skirmishes, since the day after October 7th, since October 8th last year, a low attrition war between Israel and Lebanon at that north, at the Israel's northern border. Um, but you're absolutely right. He also acknowledged in that same speech, he, did, he couldn't hide the fact that this was a terrible blow for Hamas. It was the worst security breach in its 40-year history. Um, so at the same time, you know, it is an organization that is down but not out in the sense that its internal communications network has been severely uh, degraded. And the dilemma that you just mentioned is, is a clear one, right? Hezbollah, and especially Nasrallah personally, has staked his entire reputation on being sort of the spearhead of the so-called axis of resistance. Hezbollah is seen as almost, you know, the, the sort of command commander-in-chief uh, for all of these other militias and, and resistance movements throughout the, the region, Iran-backed resistance uh, movements, and, and everyone sort of looks to it for, for guidance in a sense, whether or not in how, and to what extent it can maintain that role, and how much is Nasrallah willing to sacrifice uh, his credibility, because his credibility rests on Hezbollah doing something, or at least making it look like it's doing something, to fight back against Israel. Uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, Lebanese especially, they all have still 2006. It may have been 18 years ago, but 2006, we had that devastating war uh, between Israel and, and Lebanon, and the devastation and the havoc that it wrought um, in Lebanon, in southern Lebanon especially, and no one wants to return to that. And Hezbollah has no illusions about the fact that, yeah, Israel's a far mightier military force. So there is your dilemma there, and uh, and where is the balance? Uh, how much of a risk will he be willing to take in, in the name of maintaining his so-called legitimacy and credibility in the eyes of the broader region as the spearhead, as I said, of that axis of resistance. And what about on the other side, Israel's strategy? Talks in some Israeli media reports about possible uh, troops in Lebanon. There is some Israeli sources quoted as saying that the, that the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces right now, are deciding whether the, uh, the Defense Forces, Israeli troops, will conduct a major military operation in Lebanon itself. But um, from discussing it, and considering it to actually doing it, that is a big leap. Now, yes, the rhetoric already seems to be moving in that direction. After the second rounds of explosions uh, on Wednesday, after them, uh, you had Netanyahu reiterating that it is his firm intention, as per the Israeli cabinet's new uh, officially stated war goal, his official objective to return, to safely return residents of Israel's northern sector to their homes, homes from which they have been displaced, tens of thousands of them as a result of this near daily fire across the border that I've been speaking about. So returning them to their homes. At the same time, his defense minister, Yoav Gallant, was very clear. He used the words to say that Israel, and this was after the second round of explosions as well, the walkie-talkie explosions, said that it is Israel's entering a new phase uh, uh, that, that will perhaps, you know, concentrate much more on that northern sector. All of that said, the rhetoric aside, the public statements aside, you have to consider as well, Israel is still waging a war in Gaza. It has army and forces deployed in Gaza. So while in the past couple of days it has reportedly deployed additional IDF forces to the northern sector along that border with Lebanon, it still has forces fighting in uh, in Gaza itself. Those forces presumably uh, need to be rotated out. They'll need some rest. They'll need to be, as, as the jargon goes, refitted. So can Israel essentially wage a two-front war? Does it have the might to do it? Does it have the will to do it? Does it have political will? Does it have the staying power? Remember, you still have those families protesting, uh, you know, in, in Israel itself to get the hostages back. Where are the hostages in recent days? Has that priority moved down the list? Is now the northern sector, the fight against Hezbollah, is that becoming a new priority? And if so, is that politically sustainable? How will Netanyahu and his far-right cabinet, including Yoav Gallant, how will they sell that to the public? Can they afford to do it? It's going to be extremely tough.